All right, so this is a rocket that I modeled based off of a thing I found on Thingiverse. Um, I suppose I will find it really quickly just so that you can um, see it as reference and give credit to the people that actually made this. What it's, it's based off of, um, a thing that I have 3D printed and then I used it as inspiration for this. Um, this is just on, th on Thingiverse if you search rocket, it's the second result by gcreate. All right, so credit out of the way. Um, so in making this rocket, there's a particular issue that was presented to me, which I thought might come in handy as you're trying to line things up on the surface of other things. And that is with this porthole window, if we go to the side view, it's not exactly lined up. And it, I know this line looks vertical. Let me actually just make it a little bit, I'll turn off proportional editing. We'll make it a little bit less vertical so it's more apparent what's going on here. So if I want to line this up on the surface, there's a few different ways I can go about it. I can select the vertices individually and move them in and try to kind of, whoops, that's the wrong direction, GY, um, try to kind of eyeball it and get pretty close. I can turn on snapping to the face and I was having kind of mixed results with that depending on where exactly I snap. Uh, or you can use a modifier to keep with the theme of the day. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's going to be a shrink wrap modifier. And I know we've talked about the shrink wrap modifier before, but I'm going to make it a little bit more advanced um, with an additional option that we have. So first thing I'm going to do, just in object mode, I'm going to add a modifier. And it's going to be the shrink wrap modifier. And we already know. When we add a shrink wrap modifier, we need to give it a target. What is it shrinking to? What is it, what is it conforming to? So if I click on this little eyedropper, I can use that and click on my rocket body. And that's what happens. So it conforms everything to the rocket, which I don't want. I, I only want that outside rim to conform to it. And so that's where this second field comes in, vertex group. A vertex group is, as, it might, as the name might suggest, a group of vertices. And you can set, you can define groups of vertices um, to limit the functionality of various tools in Blender, this being one example. So here's how that works. I'm going to, with my window selected, I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to go to side view and wireframe. And I just want to select only the vertices that I want to be in this vertex group, only the vertices that I want to be shrink wrapped. Okay, and that's just this outside rim. With those selected, I'm going to go to my, um, it's uh, actually, it's this one, it's the green one, the object data properties. And you can see this first field here is vertex groups. So you can have multiple vertex groups. I don't want to get too much into the weeds with vertex groups, but if you just follow these steps exactly, it will work for you as well. So I'm going to click the plus to add a vertex group, and I will call it window shrink wrap so I know what it is and then with the vertices selected I'm going to click assign now you can set a weight so the weight is basically a percentage of influence I'm going to leave that at 100% I'm not going to worry about that it could get real complicated okay so that's all I need to do is set up a vertex group now I can go back to my modifier and we'll go back into uh, object mode and solid view and then in my modifier, I'm going to set my vertex group to my window shrink wrap. And there we go. You can see those vertices are conforming to the surface. And because it's a shrink wrap modifier, I can mess with this all I want, and it's going to follow it. Um, what's also very helpful with this is I had this set up to array around the center. And that's what this empty down here is for. Uh, actually, no, that's what this empty is for. It's a different empty, but similar rotation. So I just I can still add after that. I can add my array modifier, set it to an object offset, and set my count to four. And the shrink wrap modifier is applied to all of them equally, and I don't have to worry about it. So uh, vertex groups are pretty powerful, and I just wanted to kind of call that out as an option if you needed it. It's it's more, it can be a little bit more set up initially, but as far as flexibility as you're kind of continuing to refine and tweak your models, 
uh, it's a wonderful option to have.